Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave and today I want to talk about SCHD and options because previously I've done a review of SCHD. I'm a big fan. I do own shares. I'll link that video up above. I also did a review and said, oh, which one is better? SCHD or VOO? Which one's the GOAT? I'll link that video above as well. So a lot of people like it. I know I like it. And a lot of that has to do with the selection criteria, right? So it goes through a rigorous selection criteria. It looks for these dividend aristocrats. It looks for dividend growth. Kind of focused on dividend growth, I would say. And uh, great selection of stocks and uh, proven track record. So put all that together, people are big fans. Now, as far as the options go, eh, you know, not a lot of meat on the bone, but still worth exploring. So we're going to look at that today, see if it's worthwhile doing anything with options or not. If that is what you're looking for, please stick around. Whoop. So SCHD is the Schwab. Strategic Trust U.S. Dividend Equity ETF. And it's yielding about 3.3%. A lot of people like that dividend paid out quarterly. And uh, for this, we're going to use my covered call calculator side by side, a couple different ways. And uh, it's free to download down below. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. It's a great way to illustrate these types of trades. So that's what we're going to do. Let's dive in. So for my example, I went with John and I went with Jane. And they're a happily married couple and they're both liking this SCHD and they want to own it. They want to buy it and own it. But they also want to utilize options. And I don't know how you guys are, but for me, I like to categorize options into two different categories. One is options for income, a pure income play where you're buying and selling options to try to create income for yourself. Second category is as an enhancement. And I would definitely say with SCHD, we're headed towards the enhancement uh, option trade, right? So in that sense, instead of using a limit order, sell a put. Right? If you think something's completely overvalued and you're ready to exit that stock, maybe you sell a call. That would be kind of an example of an enhancement versus just a pure income play when it comes to options. So with these two, both of these guys, they love SCHD. They're going to buy it, hold it, own it for a long period of time. But I wanted to take two different you know, perspectives here. John thinks the stock market's a little overvalued right now. Maybe he's a little bearish overall. Jane has her shares and she just wants to keep them. So in this case, you could look at John and say, okay, he's going to buy 100 shares and immediately turn around and sell an in-the-money call. And if you're not familiar with in-the-money calls or that's confusing to you, I'm going to release another video in conjunction with this just to talk about that topic because I know it does confuse a lot of people. So that's what we're dealing here with John and Jane. And on honestly, when you look at SCHD and options, there's not a lot of meat on the bone. There's not a lot you can do with these things but maybe you can utilize them in some creative ways to enhance your own portfolio and create a little bit of income. So let's start over on this side with John, who's being conservative. He's trying to protect his butt. So let's do the setup here where he goes out and he buys 100 shares of SCHD and immediately sells an in the money call because he's a little bearish right now on the market in general, but he's trying to set up his position for the long term. Now, obviously he could go out and just sell a put. That might be an easier way to go about this, but I wanted to do covered call versus covered call kind of show side by side. So, Today's date, one contract or 100 shares of SCHD with an expiration. This is what he's going to sell a call against. Expiration of 217 with the stock at $77.95. So he decides to sell the $75 strike price, which is about 3.8% from the current price of $77.95. So in order for him to keep it, it will have to fall past that strike price. Otherwise, it's going to get called away. But it's okay because it's selling it in the money. It's going to cover him. He'll still make some money on this trade overall. If everything plays out right so over this course it's going to be 33 days that he's going to hold this and uh, down here are the different scenarios that could occur right one is the stock stays above the strike price in that case he's going to have a 295 dollar loss because he bought it at 77.95 and he's offering to sell it for 75. again if this doesn't make sense and it's confusing i'll link that other video you can go watch that and that's what it's there for now he collected $360 in premium at the point of sale. So altogether, he makes $65 on this transaction if it stays above the strike price. And that's a modest 0.83% over that 33-day period. And if we annualize that, it's about 9.22%. Not glamorous, but if he continues to do this month after month, that's kind of what his return would be. Uh, so that's one scenario. The next one here is stock price. Let's say it falls to 74. Again, this is just different ways to illustrate it. So in this case, he loses $395 on the stock, but he gains $360 in premium. 
So overall, he's lost $35, but he's pretty well set up now in this position because overall, right, he's got a break even on this next line of $74.35. That break even is 4.62% from the current price, which means basically he loses $360 in the stock, but he gains that back in premium, and that's why we get that break even. Does that make sense? Down here at the bottom, I did write the delta value for this particular trade. It's 0.8172, and we can think about that in a couple different ways. But I think one that makes logical sense at this time is to look at it as a probability. So if we think about it as a probability of 81% chance that this will expire in the money versus out of the money. So we could say four out of five times, if John makes this trade, it should expire somewhere in the money. Now, that means every fifth time it should expire out of the money and he would keep the shares, if that helps you think about it that way. But those four out of five times, it's not like he's dead in the water and he has to give up his shares. He can, of course, roll this out depending on the price of that stock. So he's still sitting there in control of these shares until he decides what to do towards the end of this trade. Now, in our second example, we have Jane, who's being fairly conservative. She wants to keep her shares. She's had these forever. She's just trying to generate a little extra income. So she wants to keep her shares and she wants a really high win rate when she sells this call. So same date, same one contract, SCHD, same expiration, same stock price. We're selling a call, in this case, at an $80 strike price versus 75 over here. So that's the only real adjustment. So for that, the stock has to rise 2.63%. And for this call option, she receives $50 in premium. She puts that in her pocket. She's off to the races. She's got 33 days till expiration. So I do have this information in here about dividends, but there is not one due until 322. So that's after expiration. So we can ignore that in this situation. So maybe that's good timing for Jane. Now, if this does go through the roof, right? It's gonna head towards uh, that $80 strike price. Maybe goes past that. She will collect $205 in profit on the stock going up in value. She'll also keep the $50 in premium, but she's gonna be forced to sell it at $80 strike price or close out the option or roll out the option. So in this case, she's, she makes $255, which is a nice 3.3%. If you annualize that, great, 36%. But obviously we can't continuously make this trade. Wouldn't always work out like that. The ideal situation for any sold call is that it heads right towards our strike price, gets very close, and it either expires naturally, or we can close it very inexpensively, or we can roll it out to a higher strike. It's kind of our goal. But what if it went to uh, some other number? Let's say I pick $79. In that case, you still have a gain in the stock going up in value. You're still gonna keep all that premium. You're still gonna have a nice return. So that's our goal. We wanna sell out of the, out of the money calls that we feel like we can keep the stock and still generate some income. And then of course we have our break even, which is on the downside here. So we're adding 50 cents, we're reducing our basis overall in that stock based on, you know, we don't know how long she's owned it. So uh, just understand that we're reducing overall by $50 if we're able to keep that. So that's kind of the tale of Jane. And with this particular trade, we have a Delta value of 0 0.2705, about 25%, let's say. So three out of four times in theory, this should expire worthless. We don't have to do anything. We just keep our 50 bucks. But that fourth time, we do have to step up the plate and make a decision. What are we gonna do? How are we going to keep our shares? Do we simply close it out? Do we roll it out and roll it up? That all depends on where it ends up expiring. How far in the money is it? Is it 80.1 or is it 85, 86? So what I tend to do with these types of trades, if I really wanna keep my shares, is I'm going to watch this really closely and as we start to bridge that $80 strike price, get to 80, 81, 82, ooh, then I'm gonna start rolling this out further in the future and hopefully further out and up. And then I'm going to look for times when we have a, you know, a little bit of a pullback. It doesn't always go up and up and up and up. So I'm gonna look for times when I can close this out, take advantage of that and close it out. because. What I really want is what I talked about up here. I want a high win rate, right? If we can get a high win rate, then we can have success doing these types of trades. But otherwise, steer clear, just keep your shares, collect that dividend, and be happy. So it's uh, gonna be a little touch and go with something like SCHD with uh, premiums being as low as they are. So this might be a first for this channel because after looking at this information, what I actually use options with SCHD. 
While I might use it as a way to enter into owning the stock, that is selling a put to pick up shares, but once I do own those shares, once I obtain them, this is probably one that I would just sit on unless an opportunity presents itself or I think the market is extremely overvalued. Something along those lines. Otherwise, it's gonna be a little bit hard to maintain and justify selling calls against it. Might be a little bit difficult. You could still do it and you might it might turn out quite well, but if you just wanna own the shares for that dividend and the potential growth, then have at it. Maybe that's the way to go about it. So anyway, what do you think? Let me know down below. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great night. Take care. Boop.